is a genre of music that's making history. In May, for the first time ever, two songs from the Mexican regional genre made their way into Billboard's Hot 100 Top 5. Grupo Frontera's collaboration with Bad Bunny, titled Un Por Ciento, or 1%, and Peso Pluma's Ella Baila Sola, She Dances Alone. For Grupo Frontera's, social media has served as the driving force behind their rise in profile, in large part thanks to TikTok. But in the case of Peso Pluma, it's the song content that's been catching the most attention. While his song that cracked the top 100 is about love at first sight, some of his other work is much darker. One of his newer songs, titled after the cartel-troubled Mexican state of Tamaulipas, has the following lyrics. They see us pass through Tamaulipas, all of us ready and well-equipped in case we have to fight. While Peso Pluma is charting under the Mexican regional genre, it's this style of music, Corridos Tumbados, that has brought him the most attention. Corridos Tumbados, an extension of Narco Corridos, takes on the genre's principles with an influence of rap and trap, touching on topics like drug violence, social issues, and sexualization. And according to Chartmetric data, the second and third most followed playlist of Mexican music fall under the Corridos Tumbados genre. As we speak right now, at this very moment, there gotta be a number of corridos being uploaded into YouTube and some other platforms. Corridos themselves are a centuries-old form of storytelling with deep roots in Mexico, serving as a way to preserve history and celebrate the accomplishments of folk heroes. The, the notion of, of hero, heroism is changed over time. Corridos in general, they do not used to be so much about uh, criminals or traffickers uh, as they are today. Dr. Juan Carlos Ramirez Pimienta is a professor of border and Mexican studies at the Imperial Valley campus of San Diego State University. For years, he's been studying the evolution of corridos and narco corridos, specifically from the 1930s onward, to what is now being streamed today. He says one of the key factors driving the popularity of this genre has been economics. Since the 1970s, with the devaluation of the peso and the economic problems in Mexico, then these type of songs re-emerged. And to me, that is not coincidence. Somebody is providing the jobs. People tend to um, not forget, but perhaps overlook certain moral or criminal characteristics of the provider. And while some may not agree with the violence in these songs, Ramirez Pimienta says it's easy to see how the songs can be a source of empowerment. Most of the listeners of these songs are the Mexican population in the United States. For that person going to work back and forth half an hour, it's dangerous because he or she would know that if he gets stopped because of a light or any little thing, it could not only mean a ticket, but deportation and the end of their family life. So for a person on the, under those circumstances, sometimes a fantasy of powerful Mexicans a musical fantasy could be intoxicating. Part of what makes Narco Corrido so unique is how the songs are created. A lot of the real life drug runners would be commissioning corridos for themselves. And uh, these corridos would be um, sort of propaganda for their organizations. Rafael Acosta Morales is an associate professor of Spanish and Portuguese at the University of Kansas. He says while some artists choose to write about drug trafficking on their own accord, it's actually quite common for them to be written as a request, with the artists being hired to pay homage to groups like the Sinaloa, Tijuana, and Gulf cartels. Some songs reportedly celebrate the battles of specific drug traffickers with authorities, but also with other competing cartels. Some music producers and some of the interpreters and composers, they are relatives of drug dealers. With some artists more open than others about the inspiration behind the songs. Just about every performer will have different takes on how that relationship works. For example, in May, Peso Pluma hung up on a reporter during an interview with the LA Times when he was asked about some of his songs some of which have left the Mexican media questioning his connections to drug organizations. The rise of this genre hasn't come without backlash. There have been several attempts to ban 
public performances. So they were banned from the radio. They were banned from being sold in music stores. In recent decades, lawmakers in Mexico have made multiple attempts to block narco corridos from being performed or even played, with legal battles being fought in the country's Supreme Court and Mexican states and cities issuing fines for bands who perform the music. In 2017, the band Los Tigres del Norte were fined $25,000 for playing songs considered narco corridos during a concert in the Mexican state of Chihuahua. The concern being that this kind of music promotes violence and cartel activity, and not just in Mexico. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, cartels dominate the U.S. market for cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and fentanyl, feeding an appetite estimated to be more than $150 billion annually. As for the potential crackdown of narco corridos being played in the U.S., there has never been much crackdown on corridos in the U.S., mostly because people don't, you know, the people doing the crackdowns don't speak Spanish. Elijah Wald is a journalist and author of the book The Narco Corrido, a journey into the music of drugs, guns, and guerrillas. Wald says those looking to curb the influence of drugs and violence will need to look beyond narco corridos if they are ultimately to find success. Particularly if you go like into the, the rooms of the teenage boys who are listening to this, the poster on the wall is likely to be Al Pacino and Scarface. And nobody ever asks Al Pacino or Martin Scorsese or Francis Ford Coppola whether they don't feel bad about encouraging violence and, and making it look romantic and exciting. And God knows they have done so much more to do that than all the corridos on earth. As for the future of narco corridos, the clicks, downloads, and ticket sales don't appear to be slowing down. And as for the source of inspiration for so many of these songs... A lot of the conversation about the dangers of this stuff acts as if this is a problem coming from Mexico to the U.S. And I just think it's really important to point out that this whole drug world is a problem the U.S. Is create, has created for Mexico. For now, artists like Peso Pluma and Nathaniel Cano and others create and cash in. Meg Hilling, Scripps News, Chicago.